So Elemental have just released the public beta of 2.8 of the free version of Elemental. With that, there are quite a few nice little updates, tweaks, and some nice enhancements. So in this video, I'm just gonna take you through and show you what they are, demonstrate how to use them, and then I'd love to get your feedback on what you think of these in the comment section below. Well, my name is Paul C, this is WP Touch, the channel where I help you get more from WordPress. If this is your first time on the channel, consider subscribing and smashing that bell icon below to become part of the WP crew and be notified every time new content is added. Okay, so the first thing we're going to take a look at is an interface change, and this is the dark mode. Now, this is something that I think is very useful because a lot of people like the whole dark mode side of things, but if you work in a darker environment with a bright screen, it's nice to have that option to darken everything down. So let's take a look at how we use that and how we set that up. So I've created a simple blank Elemental based page. We're going to come in and say edit with Elemental. That's going to open up the Elemental editor and then we can go into the settings and set things up. So what we're going to do is we're going to come down and take a look at how we change that. Now it's super easy. All we need to do is come to the little hamburger menu in the top left hand corner. Click on there and you can see we've got all the normal options. Now you can ignore the happy add-ons. It's just a plugin that I've got installed so you wouldn't normally see that. All we need to do is come over into the preferences section and from there we have a new section called UI theme. You can see it says auto detect and if we click to expand that we now have light and dark. So what exactly does auto detect do? If you were using an operating system that has the sort of dark mode such as your iMac and so on, then by enabling this auto detect whatever you set your preferences up for your actual operating system, that will be reflected inside Elementor, which I think is quite a cool way of doing things. However, if you want complete control over this and you just want to specify what you want to use, you can choose between light and dark. So we switch on dark mode, you can see it immediately makes the interface dark. This also includes your right click menu. So everything to do with Elementor's interface elements will now be in dark mode which is quite cool. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you something else on here as well. If we click to add something in, we're just gonna add in any kind of widget. So we just come back out here and we'll just drop in an inner section, for example. Now, we've got these sections and we've got the simple three options. We've got plus to add a new section, we've got the edit section, and we've got the delete section. However, if we come back into the preferences, now this is something that might have been here a while, I haven't noticed it, but if it is new, it's again, something that could be quite useful. Let's just make sure that's enabled. Come in and we'll just say we want preferences and we're gonna say edit handles. Now, if we come back over, you see we now have a fourth option, which is the duplicate section. So we can quickly duplicate any section that we want. Any of those sections, they now have that extra option added in there. Like I say, this is something that might've been in there for quite some time, but I don't really delve into the preferences side of things very often. It's only now we've got the dark mode that I've jumped in and taken a look at it. So that's quite useful but I do like the dark mode option. I'll update that and we now have dark mode for everything inside the interface for Elemental. So pretty nice looking layout, pretty nice styling. I kind of like that. Now sticking with the whole color theme, the whole color picker has been updated inside Elemental. Now this isn't just a cosmetic change that just changes the way the color picker looks. This is built from the ground up to be way more useful than it has been in the past where they use the normal built-in WordPress browser kind of editor thing. So let's take a look at that. Now we're not limited to going into just the hamburger menu and setting our default colors and picking from there. We can still do that and we can take advantage of the color picker inside there, which as you can see already looks different but we can also now use that directly inside any of the widgets. So let's simply add something like a heading in there, come up to the styling section and choose our text color, and you can see we've got all the options are still available. Now the nice thing about this is we can automatically go in and add in any colors that we want and make those available throughout the entire editing session and also the website that we're working with. So let's just say that we wanted to set a heading color that's gonna be sort of this dark blue kind of teeny kind of color. We can come up now, we can click on add picked color and that now adds that in directly inside this for us. So now what we can do is we can easily add something else in. So let's come back over, choose a button, this, this example, draw a button inside there, select our button, come up to our style and we're going to come into our background color and you can see that's now available to us. We can quickly click on that, change our text color and select any predefined color or create and save a new color if we want to all done directly inside this, no matter where we are throughout the entire interface of Elementor. So that immediately makes the whole color choosing options and saving those things globally 10 times quicker and a lot easier. So that really is something that I think is pretty cool.
Now on top of that, we've also got the way that we can deal with the colors. We can put in the hexadecimal value or we can put in RGBA values. So we have the ability to go in and easily drop those in there. So if we're using RGBA values, for example, we can use those and put in transparency and opacity kind of values and things like that. So you can now use either of those values, then you can save those out. And you can see we can simply come in, choose something that's going to be semi-opaque. We'll choose a different color this time, set that to be like that. And again, we can come in, add that, and that now saves out that particular color. So pretty cool, along with our transparency. So the color picker now becomes actually pretty useful throughout the entire editing session. So again, another one of those tools, one of those little tweaks that once you start using it, you'll realize, well, how heck did I actually live with the old version for so long when it could have been like this all the time? Pretty cool. Now, moving on from the color side of things inside Elementor 2.8 beta, we've now got responsive mode switcher control, which really sounds quite grand, but all it really means is when you've got an element and we'll select that, you can see what we've normally got the option to choose between mobile, desktop, and tablet. We can go and change settings for that. Instead of it going horizontally, it now opens up in its own little vertical window. So you can see we can switch between the tablet and the mobile view like we used to be able to do. So that's all pretty much the same. But it just, it's more of a visual thing than anything else. But what they're sort of suggesting in the documentation on the blog post to do with this is this opens up the ability to add in more breakpoints. Now, hopefully this is something they will be adding in a recent or a new update coming soon. We'd love to see in 2.8, but I think the fact they're just hinting at it at this point in this release, I don't think we'll see it just yet. But this is one of those gripes that a lot of people have had is there's not enough breakpoints for mobile and responsive layouts. So hopefully they will be addressing this in the next couple of versions and we'll see that quite soon. But they've obviously made way for that, the ability for that to be integrated into the interface without making a massive sort of change to the way things look and work. So fingers crossed we'll be seeing that soon. So um, yeah, pretty cool. Now sticking with the whole responsive side of things, we've now got better control over responsive modes. One of the things that a lot of people complained about was when you disable certain things or hide them on mobile devices like tablets and so on, you could still see them in the interface and it made designing just a little bit cluttered and weird. Well, they've addressed that now. So what we're going to do is let's just say we switch to something like, for example, we'll say we don't want this header image. So we we'll select the header image, come up to the advanced tab and down to responsive. And inside there, we've got things like hide on desktop, tablet and hide on mobile. So let's just say we'll hide that on tablet. Now, nothing actually changes on there because we're currently looking at this in desktop mode. However, if we switch over in our responsive mode to tablet, you'll now see they've grayed that out so we can immediately tell what's hidden on any kind of device. And because you hit this on tablet, if we jump over and we say on mobile, you can see it still displays because we've not hidden it on there. If we select the hide on mobile, it now grays that out. So not something that's a real massive update, but something that really just alleviates the frustration of designing layouts that have various different aspects of it that are controlled or laid out on different kinds of devices. So again, another one of those interface tweaks that I think is long overdue, but thankfully they brought it out in 2.8 and we should be having that quite soon. So pretty cool. I like that. Again, another just nice little time saver and just an ease of use thing. Now, something else they've gone ahead and changed is the way that the templates sort of work inside Elementor. Previously, you didn't need an account if you were using the free version and it didn't really matter if you had an account and you wanted to use it as part of your pro version. However, things are a little different now and I'll explain the reason why in a moment. Now, if we come down to click to add in a template, we can still see the templates we, like we've seen before. So let's go through and try to insert a template. So we say insert and you see it now takes us to create an, an account and get a template. So we can either create a new account if we don't have one and this can be a free account. You don't need to be a pro user to do this. If you obviously have an account already or you're a pro user, you would have an account. What we need to do is connect to our an account or create an account. And then we can go through the process of actually inserting those layout templates into it. So I'm going to go through the process of that. Then we'll come back and take a look. So this will take us over to my account and you can see I just need to go through and connect if I'm the correct user. Then that will sort of go back, take us back into the library and then allow us to go in and add in that new template. Now, at the moment, I'm having a bit of an issue where it doesn't necessarily load in properly. But like I say, this is still the beta version. Now, the reason they say they're doing this is to be, give you a better user experience, as in that you can have things like favorites and you can have recently used and history and so on and things like that. 
Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this. I understand why they may want to have this information and while it may be okay for the pro accounts, I think if you have a free account and then you sort of have to go and create an account and log in and do all those kinds of things, I'm not really the biggest fan of that side of things. So let's just say I'm a little bit, hmm, I'm on the fence with this one at this moment. As you can see, we get an error at the moment, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, let's say connect and insert, it'll do the same thing and take us through again and again and again. So oh, there we go, it's actually installed at this time. So there's still a few bugs to iron out with the whole process. And like I say, I'm not really the biggest fan of that. Now, there's some other things that have been added in, like compatibility with the latest version of WordPress, which I think is 5.3 and codename Kirk. So you shouldn't have any issues if you're using Elementor 2.8 when it's released with the latest version of WordPress as well. Obviously, if you are going to test this out, please don't test this on a live environment. Test it on a test account, a website you don't really care too much about, somewhere you just want to test it and see what actually how it all works and kind of thing. So those are the key takeaways in Elementor Beta 2.8. Like I say, this is the free version, not the pro version. So it'd be interesting to see if they bring anything new to the pro version as well when the beta becomes available for that. But as always, let me know what you think of these new updates. Do you think they're important? Do you think they're going to change the way you work? Or do you just see them as little tweaks that just make your life just a little bit easier and nothing to really sort of write home about? As always, I'd love to get your feedback on this. Drop your comments in the comment section below and let me get a conversation going with you guys just so you can let me know what you think. As always, all the applicable links are in the description below so you can check those out and take a look at what we're covered in this video. As always, my name is Paul C. This has been WP Tuts and until next time, take care.